Hey traders, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be going over some of the latest feature updates to the Pine script language. So here is the official blog post from last week from the TradingView team, and we'll go through it. It's quite long. Uh, we'll go through all of these new features that have been added uh, to PineScript. But before we do that, I want to mention that a trader by the name of Mark sent me some code improvements to my monthly performance table. So this performance table here is showing my month on month performance for a trading strategy. I published a video on the YouTube channel explaining the source code to the script a few weeks ago, and um, I published an update this morning that significantly improved the script. So now you can change the text size of the table. You can also change how many years worth of information display. So if I set this to six, now we have six years of information on the table and you can cycle through the different pages, which will show you previous uh, years worth of information. So you don't have to have your chart cluttered with this giant table. Um, so I'll leave a link in the pinned comment below and in the video description to the script. If you're interested in this, uh, you can copy and paste the code from this script, everything from here down into any strategy script, and it will add this table to your script. So yeah, go and check that out if this is something you're interested in and you want more information from the strategy tester that isn't provided with the vanilla trading view system. Now to today's video content, the PineScript features that we have to work with now, um, there's a few more we can play with. So the first important update here is that we can now run more realistic backtests on Heiken Ashi charts. So Heiken Ashi is a type of Japanese candlestick pattern. It's not based on open, high, low, close price values uh, directly. It's um, based on an average. I can't remember how the formula works, but it, it, it smooths out price action a bit. I've never actually used it in a trading strategy. Let me turn off the debug mode here and jump onto a Heiken Ashi chart. Some of you may have never even seen this, uh, this candlestick type. You can see that it smooths out price action a lot more. The candlestick colors are a lot more sort of consistent. They're not based on the traditional bullish and bearish, um, whether price closed higher or lower. It's based on averages. Go and Google the Heiken Ashi formula if you're interested. Uh, but the important thing the uh, TradingView developers have added to the strategy tester is the ability to run our back tests using open high low close values on Heiken Ashi charts. So what this means is if you code a strategy script in Heiken Ashi, which I wouldn't recommend you do unless you're very experienced at trading because these are synthetic price charts. They're not actually displaying the true price value on these candlestick patterns. Uh, but if you know what you're doing and you're familiar with Heiken Ashi and you do happen to create a script that uses Heiken Ashi, um, you can now turn this feature on so that your script will execute orders based on real price data. So to demonstrate this, let's grab a script off the channel. I'll just jump over to um, the strategy lab playlist and find something. Let's just do the mean reversion strategy here. I'll just grab the source code off the website for this. Copy, create a new blank script, add it to my chart and have a look at what's going on here. So if I change this back to normal candlesticks and we find a trade, here's one here. So this mean reversion script has placed a limit order at this green line. It got filled on this bars open and then we close the trade after price rallied. So now if I change this to hike in Ashi, what the script is now doing is analyzing all of its logic based on the Heiken Ashi candlestick information. So for example, if my script requires a lower close than the previous candle in order to place a buy limit order one ATR below the low, which is similar to what this mean reversion system does, the setup is a little more complicated, but let's imagine that's what we're doing. It will base all of that, the ATR value, so the actual true range of the past X amount of candles, I think it's five candles in this script, it will base that true range based on the Heiken Ashi candlestick information, which is not the same as the open high low close bar information because we're working with averages here. So you can see the each bar opens in the middle of the previous bar. That's not a real opening price. That's not where the candle actually opens. And by extension, we cannot trade that open. We cannot place a trade in our broker to open a trade at a synthetic bar open price. So what would happen is if I open up my strategy tester here and I make sure I've got this off. These uh, strategy results are useless. They're completely useless because they're not based on real price information. It's not realistic. We couldn't trade the prices that this uh, script is trading. If we find a trade that it did take, let's look at this one. You can see that the script 
exited a trade at this bar's open. But if we go onto a normal bar chart, you'll find that this was not the actual opening price of this bar. And so now if I turn this option on, this new setting, let's have a look at this trade here. There we go. You can see that the bar actually opened here at my blue line. And so now the script is entering and exiting trades using the underlying real price information that these Heiken Ashi bars are based on. I'm not gonna go into any more information about that. I don't recommend using Heiken Ashi candles for anything really, um, to be honest, unless you're very experienced at trading because they're based on synthetic price values. It's just dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not experienced. So for those of you who are experienced, we have this new cool feature to work with. It's off by default, that's important to mention. Uh, so if you are working with a Heiken Ashi script, make sure to turn it on. You can turn it on permanently in your script code using this parameter here. So if I copy that into my strategy parameters up here, equal true. Now that setting will always be on. So I recommend doing that if you're working with Heiken Ashi. Next up, we have this really cool feature, which I'm actually happy to see. In a past update, the TradingView team added an option to set our plots to specify how to draw our information up here on the indicators status bar. So some indicators have dozens and dozens of indicator values and they clutter up your chart. Sometimes you want to know what some of these values are. Some of them are moving average values. Some of these values are important to know, but the majority of them usually aren't. Like we don't need to know what each price value of each ATR Keltner band here is. Um, and that's what these three numbers are. This is the moving average price. So let's say we want to keep the moving average price, but we don't want these drawing. We can just add this parameter, display.pane. And if I paste that in here and save my code, you can see the values have disappeared from up here and they're only displaying on the chart pane. Now you could also display them only in the data window here. If I set that to uh, data window. Now you can see they're not drawing on my chart at all, but they are drawing in here. Well, now we can do that same functionality with our user inputs. So if I come up to my user inputs here, um, let's say we don't wanna see middle high. We don't want that text parameter displaying in my status bar. I can say here now, display dot none. Now if I save my code, middle has gone away, but we still have high drawing. So let's copy this parameter here, paste it onto this user input. That should get rid of high as well. There we go. Now we only have our indicator values um, showing in the status bar of our user inputs. So that's actually a pretty cool feature because um, it's not uncommon to have scripts that have lots and lots of user inputs and they can really clutter up your chart um, with unnecessary information. So now we can turn these values off without having to go into the settings menu and turn off arguments. Turning this off will remove all of our parameters, but sometimes you, you want to display some parameters, but not all of them. So that's what this setting is for, this new feature. Very cool stuff. Next up, we have some new built-in uh, variables to access instrument information. So information about the market we are trading. So sim info is used to get symbol info. And there's a lot of parameters here to work with, well, not a lot, but a decent amount of quite important information here. And the TradingView team have added a few more. So now we have country. Um, what else did they add? We have sector, industry, and country. So this is more for stocks. Here I've just quickly created a label that is going to display this siminfo.country value on the last bar on my chart. There we go. So SPY is US. If we jump over to DAX, is it DAX? I think is a German index. Yeah, German index. This should say something German, DE. If I jump over to all ordinaries, we'll have AU, I'm guessing. Don't know why that is not working. I don't know why is last didn't work just because this bar is active, but anyway, there we go, AU. So you can get the country code. We can also get the industry. So let's have a look at uh, what industry something like Apple is. Let's see what the label says, telecommunications equipment. Okay, and what else do we have? We had um, sector as well. So let's have a quick look at that. Electronic technology sector. So, Given the fact that the strategy tester cannot perform a portfolio level backtest, meaning it can't backtest multiple markets simultaneously, I don't really know what the point of this will be for most people. 
normally you would use this as like a filter so that you're only trading certain sectors or, or avoiding certain sectors. Uh, but I guess it's interesting and useful to have access to this information. Um, hopefully this is TradingView working towards expanding the strategy tester in the future to be capable of portfolio level backtests, but we'll see. I'm sure if that does happen, it'll be a long way away. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Let's go over the rest of these feature updates. Uh, we can now disable alerts for certain orders in strategy scripts. So here you can see they've disabled the alert for exits. So normally, if you come up to the alert box here and you select a strategy script, it will now generate an alert whenever a order is executed. Strategy alerts trigger when the strategy executes an order. But for whatever reason, you may not want to trigger an alert for every order. Maybe you only want to enter trades and then manage the exit manually. Uh, for example, you could use a third party uh, API to enter, uh, automate your trade entries. So you can detect a setup you like to trade on the markets you like to trade, generate an order on your broker. But then let's say you want to use discretion to manually manage that position and exit that position. If you don't want to send an alert to your broker, or you just don't want to be annoyed by having hundreds of alerts like I do up here, you can um, use this new feature, disable alert equals true. Now, when the strategy script closes this open trade, if I have set alerts on this script, an alert will not be generated for this particular order, but it will still be generated for this. So disable alert is going to be off by default, but if you turn it on, you will not generate alerts for specific orders. So that's a great addition for you automated traders out there. Next up, we have this interesting one here that I read over. It says calculation change for maximum drawdown and run up in strategies. The calculation of maximum drawdown and maximum run up. So this is your max drawdown, the maximum the system lost. And max run up is your max favorable excursion. What was the maximum profit you had on the table? versus what you realized, what you actually took out of the markets. TradingView have improved this, these metrics to take into account the potential capital that could have been achieved within a trade. Previously, only the capital values at the entry and exit points were considered. So I guess max drawdown will be worse now on an open trade basis. So let's draw out a bit of price action here. Let's say this is price values. Let's say you enter long here and you exit your trade for a profit here. Previously, it seems the strategy tester did not include this underwater period of time in your max drawdown calculation. It only considered the entry and exit points. So it would only count the max drawdown if the trade was closed for a loss and vice versa. If you um, entered a long trade here and then exited your long trade here, this period of time here would not be considered in your max run up. And so these values would not correspond to their maximum potential value. So trading view have changed how this works so that it should more accurately calculate your max drawdown and max run up for open equity. So personally, when I'm building systems, I'm more interested in the realized drawdown and realized profit. Uh, but these are interesting and useful metrics to track in certain situations. So I definitely recommend um, coming and reading these two articles. They're quite important to know if you are using these metrics in your strategy development process. Next up, we have support for the VAR IP modifier in user defined types. So the VAR IP um, keyword is similar to the VAR keyword. So VAR keyword makes your variables persistent across all the bars on your chart. So typically PineScript will reset all of your variables on a new bar, unless you put this keyword in front of the variable name. Once you do this, the variable will retain its value across all the bars on your chart until you force it to update. So this is very useful for things like trailing stops, for example. You want your trailing stop to be persistent across all the bars on your chart, you don't want to be resetting it on every new bar or it will never get hit. So the VAR IP modifier is similar to that, but it allows variables to retain values between each execution of the script on the same bar. So each tick update. And this keyword can now be applied to fields of user defined types. So here's an example, a uh, bit of code. Let's copy this over into the pine editor, add it to our chart. So we're looking at, at uh, this indicator here. So what's happening here is we're defining a user defined type with a counter in it. One of these has the VAR IP keyword, one does not. They're both being incremented by one. 
every time the script executes on the current bar. But one of them uses the VAR IP keyword and one does not. You can see this one, this first value is adding one to itself every time the script executes and your script executes on a real time bar whenever volume changes. So a trade was executed at the current price or the price itself changes. If either of those two things happen, your script gets executed a second time. And now we can use the VAR IP keyword within the context of a user defined type. So a bit of a niche feature update here, but I'm sure it'll be very useful for certain use cases. Moving on, we have a pretty cool new feature here that I'm very keen to play around with, and that is currency conversion rate request. So we can now use the request.currencyRate function, which allows us to retrieve the conversion rate from one currency to another. This function requires two parameters from and to, each being a three letter string code. So this is very, very cool. I really like this one because it helps with uh, particular use cases like strategy automation. If you're a Forex trader and you're trying to send orders to your broker, it can be a bit tricky sometimes to calculate the position size to send to your broker. For example, if you're using AutoView, you need to send the order size along with your order to AutoView to be executed on your broker. If you're using Pine Connector, you don't need to do this because Pine Connector can uh, calculate your position size inside MetaTrader. But for a third party like AutoView or certain cryptocurrency automation services, you'll need to specify your order size, your position size. And this new request.currency rate really simplifies that process. For example, in my ultimate pullback indicator, I have a block of code here. First of all, look at how many parameters are in this indicator, this UPI script. I need to go through and use that new feature to convert all of these to display.none so that I can remove all of this clutter. So I'm looking forward to doing that to a lot of my scripts actually. If I come down here to determine position size for auto view, this is the code I had to write out in order to get the correct currency conversion. You can see there's at least seven lines of code here just to get the currency conversion rate so that when I pass in my account size into auto view here, that it converts my position size correctly using my account currency or the denomination of my currency in my broker compared to what's on the chart. Uh, so yeah, this new request.currency rate is going to be very handy for that particular use case. And last but not least, the final feature update listed in this blog post is new functions in the array namespace. Uh, four new functions were added for playing with arrays. Array.first returns the first element of the array. Last returns the last element. Every returns true if every element of the array is true. Otherwise it returns false. And sum returns true if at least one element contained in the array is true some quality of life updates for the array um, namespace here. And that about does it for today's video. It was a bit longer than I expected. There are some pretty major, well, not major, but significant feature updates here. Um, they're not just little things. So it's really cool to see TradingView still expanding the PineScript language. That keeps me in a job for, <laughs> for a bit longer and uh, it helps us to write better scripts. So it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, makes TradingView more useful. It makes coding in Pine uh, more of a pleasure. It still has a long way to go in a lot of ways, uh, particularly in the realm of strategy uh, development and backtesting. As far as trading tool development goes, like indicator development, setup detection, it's a pretty amazing language. But as far as strategy testing goes, it's lacking significantly in a lot of ways that I hope they improve in the future. Uh, one big thing for me is portfolio level or basket testing. Uh, being able to test multiple markets or even just run your script on multiple markets. For example, how amazing would it be if we could write a script that analyzes markets for setups and we could just plug it straight into the stock screener or the crypto scanner? I can't believe TradingView haven't added that feature yet. It would be great to be able to write our own filters to scan the markets to detect certain conditions and setups. Um, there's probably third-party tools out there that allow us to do that, but it would be great to have that all built into PineScript. For now, that will do it for today's video. I hope you found these features interesting. Um, let me know in the comments what you plan to do with some of these feature changes and updates, because I'm genuinely very curious to see what you guys plan to do with all of this. Anyway, with all that said, I'll wrap this video up here. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about PineScript, you can check out the video description below. Check out my links, all of that YouTuber stuff. I have to say, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, name your first child after me. All of that helps the channel. 
Uh, so appreciate your support. Have a great week ahead and good luck with your trading. Take care.